Hi, welcome. It's really nice to be sitting down and having a little chat with you again. I wanted to say, I'm sitting here knitting. I'm waiting for the coffee to brew. I've been doing chores today and so I'm just taking a little break and I thought that I would have a chat with you while I did that. I wanted to say thank you so much for the lovely warm welcome back that you all gave me um, and so many familiar pa faces or voices popping up in the chat. It was it was really warming to know that you'd all been loitering on the YouTubes um, and that you would give me such a, a warm welcome back into this space. Some of you asked about the allotment and I'm not sure if I've said this before but it won't have been for quite some time so probably no harm in saying it again but I shared my allotment uh, with a friend and my friend still has the allotment and allotment tears on it and when I go up there it's mainly for a social and a tea and a coffee I do poke around in the greenhouse and pull up the odd weed and sometimes I grow things that she plants out up there so the allotment is still in my life but it's not my allotment <laughs> um, and that's partly because just before the pandemic, I moved to another town, which is about 20 miles away. And then I bought a little house here that has a very large garden. And so there's a lot that I could do with my garden here. And I don't really need, feel like I need an allotment as well. In fact, there's a lot that I should really do at a much swifter pace here. <laughs> um, and so I think having a separate allotment garden might just be one thing too many. But yeah, as I say, the allotment is still in my life. It hasn't gone away and that's partly because the people are still in my life. <laughs> so that's quite nice. So yeah, last week I spoke to you about Bridgerton, not Boverton, Bridgerton, <laughs> which I finished and I'm still wearing as you can see and I have cast on something new. I had some yarn in my stash already that I bought some time ago, let me pull out the board. It's Ulyssy. And this lovely bronze colour. You can tell I like this colour. Um, and it's by Durerum Natura. It's a sport weight yarn. I think it's from France. Yeah, and I had, I bought this because I had knitted another jersey in Gilead, which is their sort of, is it DK or maybe Worsted version, in exactly this colour, because I like it a lot. <laughs> um, and I just really liked the yarn, and I'd been wanting to make a lighter weight cardigan, and so... I purchased this yarn to do that and I did actually cast on another cardigan which then for one reason or another well not really I'll explain the reason in a second <laughs> um, I put to one side and never never finished and so that I'm a significant way into it that cardigan has just been languishing in a bag for couple of years. So I cast on, I'm on the back here, 
Oh, I'm halfway through a row. These are the shoulders. This is the bit that goes across here. Across your shoulders. Down the back. Um, I cast on Beaufort, Beaufort 5 by Isabel Kramer. I don't know if you can see that very well if I just hold up a picture. But it's a very sort of simple and quite plain cardigan. And one of the reasons I chose it is because it's knitted from the top down. And I would like to try and make this as long as possible. I like a good long cardigan. And so I'd like to be able to use up all of, all of my yarn. So I'll probably get down just below the armpits and then do the sleeves and then just carry on until I run out of yarn. Um, it's got a little bit of a stitch pattern on it, just a little bit of texture. Let me hold it up, you might be able to see it. Yeah. Just a little bit of texture and I had started, I made a start on this and then I put on a film and I was getting down the back towards the armpits and I realised that I was manoeuvring the stitch, I had started uh, manoeuvring the stitches for this particular stitch pattern as the pattern told to. And then, whilst I was watching this film, I'd done something, started doing something different. And so I basically changed the, the stitch pattern. The stitch pattern has you lift one stitch up and over top of another one. And I had started uh, performing that operation in a way that actually moved the stitch in front of the other one and crossed it like a little cable. Um, so the first row was correct and then after that I'd just gone off on my own agenda. And I could have got, kept going and nobody would have noticed. Um, but when I looked back at the way that the stitch pattern was as it was described in the pattern, I rather liked it. And so I undid it and start it again. So I just have to remember to concentrate and lift my stitches up and over rather than making little cables. But I do like it. And as I say, I think, I think the useful thing about this pattern is I'm going to be able to make a nice long cardigan, sort of a lighter weight summer cardigan and use up all of the yarn. However, before I can really get on with that, I have to undo the cardigan that I started before. And as I pull it out now, I'm wondering if I actually want to do that. <laughs> because here it is. This is one of the fronts, and you can see it has this, sorry, this is one of the fronts, and you can see it has this lovely cable, sort of cabled lace pattern down the front. This pattern was actually designed for Ulysses and where is it gone? I had the pattern. I had it here a minute ago. Here we go. It's called Leave Melina by Joanna Ang and the construction of this cardigan is a little unusual in that you start you start at the hem on the back and you knit up to the shoulders and then you continue to knit up and over and down the front and I think, I think the reason I stopped was because that actually makes it really difficult to adjust the length. Now I'm not a really tall person, 
um, I'm about 174 centimeters so I'm above average for a woman <laughs> and so I suppose I like to be able to adjust the length of things and so this particular construction makes that a little bit tricky and what kind of what is a little frustrating is that actually it would have been this this cardigan could have been designed so that you knitted the back down and then you picked up stitches along the shoulder and knitted the front down and that would have made it much much easier to adjust the length and also you know to do things like if you'd wanted waist shaping in the back or something you know you could have done some it just would have made that whole construction thing require less forethought and it does occur to me that I could probably work out how to do that myself and as I'm looking at this really pretty motif down the front I'm sort of like Ooh, do I want to undo this because that is really nice I'm not sure <laughs> um, because I'm rather enjoying just knitting on this but I do realize that with such a simple pattern and such a simple stitch pattern this cardigan is going to be epic because <laughs> it is sport weight as well so yeah I do like that that motif down the front do I want to rip this out I think I do and I don't think I can be bothered to work out and re-engineer the pattern so there we go that's the size of that I think the conclusion is that I'm just going to carry on. I wouldn't expect to see this finished anytime soon. Um, I mean, this took me over a year. And, you know, it's a, I'd like to finish it to wear this summer. We'll see how that goes. So that's months away. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect to come back next week and have me hold up something that looks more like a cardigan. It may not be much more than this. So yeah. I'm still humming and harring about this. <laughs> I think I am just going to go ahead and, and rip this out and carry on. And maybe this cardigan pattern will come back into my life at another point. So, my coffee I think is just starting to gurgle. And I fancy a little snack. It's been lovely to sit down and talk to you again and to and to have all your voices back in the comments below and i shall talk to you again soon cheerio